Hey guys, welcome to Waste Out Wednesday. For today's Waste Out Wednesday week, not because we paid $50 for it, but when we got there, she said, hey, I have this old broken harp that goes with it. Would you be interested in it? And I'm like, yeah, I got a guy for that. We were like packed up and leaving and she's like, wait, 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 I have the harp, do you want it? We're like, uh, yeah. Yeah, wait a tick. <laughs> So we're gonna show you guys how to do some basic repairs and then I'm gonna be doing some chippy milk paint on this dresser here today. So thanks for joining us. If you're new and you love DIYs and furniture painting, make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right there. And all the products that we're using today can be found on jamierayvintage.com. If you like my shirt, my joggers, or my new floral Birkenstocks, you can pick those up at jamierayvintagehome.com. All right, As let's, always, thanks for joining us today. Let's get started. Let's get the glue in this. That's going to be most of what we're doing today. You're going to have to work somewhere else, though, because i got to prime this. I uh, guess I'll prime, I'll prime the sides. While you you, you get prime them. the side. I'll, I'll drop the camera down low so they can see what you're doing. All right, I bought. I brought a new pad primer. You got some salvation solution I from DIY. So this you is, get started doing that. I'm going to go grab the other. This has been our go-to for stain blocking the last... I don't know, a month or two? How long has it been out? Okay, so this this harp goes together like this. Let me flip it around so you can see it good. So it goes together like this. It has one dowel left on it and one that's broken, but the top piece of this wood is broken out. So we're gonna have to do some fun gluing. Luckily, it's just a support piece on the back I think most of the strength, it fits in these slots back here and screws in. Most of the strength is right there and this is pretty much decorative. So I'm not super worried about how strong this ends up. If I was going to really, if this was like load bearing, I would redowel this and maybe even remake this whole piece here because that split out is gonna really weaken this. But I think just gluing it together, that it's going to be okay. So I like to use uh, Type Bond 2. It has a little bit longer open time than Type Bond 3. Type Bond 3 is your strongest, but if you make a mistake after about five minutes, you cannot go back and undo that. Yeah, you're stuck. You never make mistakes, that right? <laughs> right. Okay, so this is as hard as this repair is going to be. For now, we'll do we'll do a little bondo later on the gap up top. So press that together, and then I'm gonna clamp this. I gotta go. I'm dripping glue. That's okay. When you're done with that, can you take the hardware off for me? Yep. I'm gonna go over and grab my big clamp. I'll leave that. And, and now I don't see it. Oh, you're big. It's because I cleaned everything up in here. I know you cleaned everything up and moved. So did you put it in the garage? Because it was over against that back wall there. I may have put it in the garage because. We clean, we put the garage doors on the garage so that we can clean this out. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it in here for a minute, but when All I right. got in here. I will I'm go just, on the hunt. Okay. I'm just using clear. When I do things that I'm going to do chippy, I like to do the clear primer because I want to chip down to the dark stain underneath. This is mahogany. Anybody ever painted mahogany before? It's a bleeder. You need two coats of primer and you should wait overnight. In this case, we're not waiting overnight. So if I do have some bleed through left, then I'll just touch it up as I find it. Best practice is two coats, wait overnight, then work on your piece. Also make sure you clean your piece really well. You don't have to do primer to do the milk paint or the DIY paint. I use the primer because it will block the stains, which if you've done old furniture, you know it's going to be bleed through. So I would rather just do a few coats of primer before I get started to block the bleed through. The dark color, I wouldn't worry about it. So this is a bar clamp. I just picked this up from Harbor Freight. I think it was about $11 and it works really well. I've probably built about 50 tables with this thing. I have some big Betsy clamps that I use, but they're really heavy. So on a lightweight project like this, I just get this little bar clamp out and squeeze things together. Kay says, hello, chalky queen and king. <laughs> and uh, Janice says, oh, no. bleeder. Yes, mahogany is notorious for bleeding, especially when you're going white. Even if it's been sealed well, this kind of age, like there's some burn marks and some water rings on the top of this. 
Those will come right on through. Yeah, um, so let's see, who just said they used this? Lisa Dixon said she used the Salvation Solution last night and she really loved it. So it comes in clear and white. Um, if I'm going white without a lot of distress, I usually will use the white primer because then I don't have to use as much paint. But in this case, when I'm trying to get a chippy look, I don't want to chip down to the white primer. I want to chip down to this mahogany finish. So I am using the clear, which this is also really great um, if you're doing a color and you don't want the white primer to show underneath it when you distress it. So I do love the clear primer. Okay, so that's clamped up, that's well enough. I just needed to hold it tight until that glue dries. I may even come back in and run a couple nails through there just because that dowel. Has so the clear primer is a lot thinner, so I feel like it actually goes a little bit further because it's not as thick. I'm gonna have to really sand these floors. We've basically been using these floors like a drop cloth for the last year. That's all right, it's already <laughs> primed right here. If I'm squatting, this probably isn't my best look, so it's too much to top. Okay, so that's clamped up, and then it's got this little finial knob up on the top that I think normally if it was like structural, I would I would drill into this, put a little dowel in there, like if this was a foot on a buffet or something, and put a little dowel in and then glue everything up, and that would make that pretty strong. But since this is just decorative on the top, it's just going to get some wood glue and that'll make it pretty strong. I mean, strong enough to move around and be decorative. Of, I'm gonna the grab a flathead uh, flatted screwdriver for okay. the hardware. I actually don't think I have one that's small enough for these screws. Oh, do we have like a chisel? Well, the one here I have, I modified the one that I can find here. You modified it? Well, I ground it down because I needed it to be wider. Of course you did. <laughs> so it's not, it's not good for little uh, drawer pulls and things. Okay, so that's gluing up there, that joint there, and then the finial is this one. You can't even tell which one I glued. It's all right, it's just working up there. Shirley says two lives in a row. She's on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> you got to catch them while they're live. They're the most fun live. So we go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time for Waste Not Wednesday. We usually show you guys taking junk, repairing something that was going to go in the garbage. Like, it was so funny. The lady's like, Are you, I have a mirror. It's kind of broken up, so I didn't put it in the listing. Would you want it? I'm like, heck yeah. So this is actually just going to go in the shop. We've been making a lot of vanities from old dressers. And this would be perfect for that, but we are, we've got just about everyone done. Behind me is the kids' vanity. It's not painted in the middle because uh, we're going to put a sink there, so I'm not bothering to paint it. And then I've got to get our master bedroom vanity done. I try to work on the painting stuff while Zeb's doing framing and whatnot, so that way when he's ready to put those vanities in, I will have all the paint and sealer finished. Here. Um, I need a lesson on replacement table legs on a pie crust table. Um, we have a lot of table leg repairs, so mostly I feel like if it's glued and right, clamping, if there's some major issues, you may have to drill and put a dowel in it. Just kind of depends. Every table breaks a little different. As Amy says, I'm currently transitioning a vintage student desk into cubbies and a dollhouse. I really need some salvation solution. It is good stuff. You want me to do that? Um, yeah, you can do that if you want to. With the chisel. These chisels are basically screwdrivers, and we've even used them on uh, some of these Adobe bricks a little bit here and there. She says she <laughs> loves my shirt, and Jana says I'm painting in fashion, especially when seriously I'm obsessed with these new flower sandals. I used to have a pair like this a few years ago, and I haven't been able to find them anywhere. Um, and we're just painting this dresser, and Zeb repaired the harp, and we're just showing you guys how to use primer, and we're going to be using some milk paint here in a minute. I don't know that we'll do anything to this hardware. Paint it's really candle. cool, and it's all here. Is it's actually pretty old on this hardware. 
and I'm just priming this because it's mahogany. This is like probably furniture 101. Like if you have something that's mahogany or cherry, use, uh, we used to use shellac to keep it from bleeding, but shellac is, will make you have a headache. You can't do it inside the house. Where not matters. water based. So you either have to buy a spray can. If you brush it on, you gotta use special cleaner to clean your brush. This is as as you can do it inside without a mask. Just you can see the mahogany, like whatever's on this is changing the color um, of the primer. The <laughs> primer before it dries. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need a new coat. Can you clean off the top of this? Yeah, I got two more of these to pull off. Yeah. This is a two-hand drawer, meaning if you just pull one tool, it's gonna bind up. <laughs> Most of these old dressers are like that. So the number one question we get asked is, I painted my piece and it was fine and then I sealed it and these weird spots came up. What in the world happened? I'm like, uh, that's bleed through. And if you're, if you're somebody like us who paints a lot of white furniture, you deal with bleed through a lot. Wiping your piece down with some soap and water and rinsing it also does help a lot because I swear, every old piece I get, some kid has like written on it with Sharpie marker and you don't know until you seal it and then that paint comes through. And in case anybody's like, oh, don't paint the antique. This finish is chipped up. There's heat marks in it. It needs to be stripped. So if somebody wants to strip it later on, they can go right on it. I'm not painting over a perfect wood finish no matter what it looks like on the other side. Would you mind using that and opening up that other can? Because I have. Yeah. No, I'm down to the drippy drips. Chisel screw, screwdriver coming up. All right. That's all there is to it. That pint, though, I did quite a few projects. Like I said, the clear primer is a lot thinner, so I feel like it goes a little bit further than the white. But the white's nice because if you're not going to do a lot of distress, then you don't have to do as many coats. But it's hard to distress through the white primer if you want to get to the dark finish underneath. And if you're using a color and you don't want the white to show, then the clear is a good option. Hopefully that heart dries in enough time that we can show them what it looks like. Yeah. I it usually sets up in about an hour on that type on two, and then in about 24 hours you can do what you want. It'll be dry enough that we can show them. I haven't even showed you guys the mirror. It's been hiding back behind over here. I'm pretty happy. All the lights are in and they all work. And we have these fun Wi-Fi lights that connect to an app on your phone. And you can change colors on them and the hue and things. So They can be purple, bright white, or more white. And it's nice at night when we're working not to have like crappy lighting. Oh, I forgot I already did that door. This is really thin, so it will drip on you. If you're spoiled and used to nice, thick DIY paint, just drop know cloth. that it's thin. Use the drop cloth. Okay. Right. Debbie, you want to keep, actually you know what? I need the second coat the other side. Talk to them about the milk paint that you mixed up. All right, so this is actually old fashioned milk paint, but it's the exact same formula as Sweet Pickens milk paint. And we just sell old fashioned in the shop. Old fashioned's in the shop because we can't sell it local, sweet pickings local here. So we just had to switch the brands. Yeah. But it's the same manufacturer. So one part paint, one part water. So it comes in a powder form. Um, and then I did extra bond, probably about half of what you want to do. If you're doing the full strength extra bond, you do two one parts. part uh, extra bond to two parts of the paint mixed up. So you take your mixture of paint and then you add half of that in extra bond for full strength. Also, so, I was gonna say this clear primer is so so thin, you could totally spray it. Oh yeah, it would like be. The, the other primer, you don't want to water it down, but this doesn't need to be watered down. You could totally just spray this. Just if you spray this, make sure you're watch, washing out your uh, gun really well. It, yeah, it will, if you don't get it all out, it will stick it um, and also, make sure that you don't spray it on too thick because it will drip on you. Where'd that little brush go? Oh, you're using it. Yeah. Do you want to wipe this mirror? You know what? I'll wipe the mirror down in a sec. Yeah. Be careful when you're if we prime that mirror. 
because it will not come off as easy as the paint. So I mixed this up with immersion blender. It's a little on the thick side, but I did that so that we can do pretty good coverage and kind of show you guys. But about, about a melty milkshake is what you want that to be. Again, you need to let your primer sit overnight. They're not following those directions. <laughs> so I'm giving you the correct, the correct directions because we might experience more bleed through than we would if we just waited. But we don't have time for that. Okay. You should let it dry a few hours before you second coat it. So we get a lot of people that are scared sometimes to use the milk paint because they're worried that it's going to chip off. Let me show you this piece. This is the kind of results you get with the milk paint. We did this a little while ago and it, some of it resisted and chipped off and we white waxed it, but it's really hard to get this finish, this look without using milk paint. You just don't get that authentic chipping. You can kind of force the DIY paint to do stuff and you can do some wax resist techniques, but it's still hard to get that authentic chippiness. It's already dirty. We've been yeah, using it to store yeah, cleaning yeah, supplies. I had to stand it and re white waxed, and I had to stand off some spots in the middle that got sprayed. It's, it's being yeah. used to store uh, toilet, paper. toilet paper and some, some first aid supplies and uh, magic erasers. <laughs> I think I already second coated this stuff. This just seems to dry. Yeah, and she second coat the top. Also, while she's finishing that, with the primer we started covering these big eaves we decided not or not eaves the uh these openings above like the, the pantry and the bathroom over there that is like a faux beadboard it comes in a plywood and it's hard to tell probably on camera before we paint it um because the grains run together but it's got these grooves in here that have been routered in and it looks just like beadboard, like a paneling, but this is actual plywood. Usually you get this in like an MDF type product. And I like it in plywood because when you paint it, it looks like real wood beadboard, except for instead of fake MDF. We just, they have it at Lowe's and Jamie was like, I have to have some of this. We're going to try it out. And we put some- Mirror form, so we're going to use it on the mudroom ceiling. The only thing with it is you do have to prime it all because it will bleed through. And then the F does make it a little faster, but it doesn't look as authentic. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna make sure. Okay, let me wipe this. Down. Did you, does this have cleaner on the rag? Um, nope. Not really? Not really, so you can just wipe off the dust. Okay. I'm just making sure I don't have any drips with all this detail here. Drips are the worst. Oh, don't lean that off. That's not it's not gonna hurt it. It's mostly dry right now. It dries pretty fast. Yeah, it dries much faster than the paint. Just everywhere, like I think I get the <laughs> paint out of the cracks, and then it. This mirror yeah. has that good old age on the actual glass. Oh, is there some like? Well, there's like some little spots. There's some places where it looks like the the silver or whatever they use to back it is peeled and oh. got some damage. It's a little cloudy. And Nina, you just got here. We're painting this dresser here. Zeb already repaired the harp that was in pieces. All right, what is the difference between beadboard and T-11? Maybe they meant white swan. <laughs> Pearl. Uh, the beadboard is a, to me, is a blue white. And vintage linen is a gray white. White swan is a warm white. We're going to be using the equivalent of Sweet Pickens flower sack, which is a fairly bright white. I would say flower sack is between beadboard and white swan. She's asking about wood pieces. I, oh, sorry. So what's the difference between beadboard and T-11? I don't know what T-11 is. Is that some sort of plywood then? I don't know, maybe. I don't know, what is T-11, Jane? You're gonna have to break that down for us. <laughs> this is, and this is obviously not real beadboard. It's like plywood paneling. Janine, this dresser was $50 and they threw in the mirror for free because the harp was broken. So if you just tune in, make sure you watch the replay and you can see how Zeb fixed all the broken it's
Do you know oh, that? Uh, so those are just like, the, they look like textured wood, I, I, if I'm thinking of the right thing. Yes, Vintage Sim. These are our joggers. They're $19.95 with free shipping, and they have pockets. So in our be, uh, Vintage Home. And they're super soft, and they come in regular sizes all the way up to like 2X, maybe, maybe 3X. I'm not sure. At least 2X. And then also my shoes are on the website, too. I think Caitlin's linked them a few times. Christy, one of my employees and very good friends, went through the JRV Home website, and she put subcategories in the JRV closet, so you guys can easily find things now. All right, this is ready for primer here. So, in answer to the, the beadboard question, that it's it's actual real pine um, plywood on this stuff that we're using, whereas I think the other one is like a composite man-made product, and it just looks like pressed wood, like a pattern. Oh, the MDF. Yeah. yeah, I don't love MDF because it's too perfect. Whereas you're going to get texture and imperfections in this plywood that you would not get in the MDF. Plus, this comes in the wider panel, and they make the skinny one. The skinny one literally looks like old school beadboard, and it doesn't look like that manufactured perfection, which I do not enjoy. <laughs> It's okay, like in a pinch or on you know, a piece of furniture, but in my house especially, whereas this house is 100 years old, I'm trying to make it look similar to what would have been used. And the reason why we're doing beadboard on the top half of where this goes up is A, the angles are pain in the rear, but B, I wanted a relief from the shiplap. So everywhere you see, from the, uh, we're going to shiplap up to the beams, but above the beams, everywhere you see that sheathing up there, that will all be the vertical beadboard. And we might do more than that, depends. We may do some board and bat depending bad, on that's how it looks painted. After we move in. <laughs> yeah. Because that's something you can throw up in a few hours and it's not a huge mess. All right. Are you ready? Are you um, going to start painting? I, we should have brought the heat gun. Just paint the top. I think it's dry. Okay. No, the top is totally not dry. This oh. side is dry ish. Dry ish. Like in another few minutes, the top will be dry. Okay. Well, um, here. I'm hoping. I'll salvation solution this. Nope. I got to wait. I've got some wet spots. Dryish. We'll answer questions while we wait. Do, 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 do. Live, kind of live wood, video. <laughs> what kind of used uh, what is used for a bed base, like in a car bed? Oh, fake wood. Like um, that's MDF, probably. Like in the Is like, it for the slats? Just check and see. It could be pine. Like pine and oak are tra work. traditionally used in like a truck bed, like the back of a truck bed. No, no, no. Like Jonah's bed he sleeps in. If it's oh. the bed slats, just tell them that you need like pine one by three is probably what they have in it. I thought you meant the actual bed part, but if it's just the, the slats underneath, that's what you would need. <laughs> Janet says, no heat gun, what the? I know. I need to just order one and keep it here so we don't have to go back for I may uh, have one over in my toolbox, but good luck. Jasmine says, is the whole main part of the house shiplap? Yes, so the old house is all shiplap and vertical bead board because we have this exposed wood ceiling that you saw earlier. Um, and then the family room of the addition will be shiplap. They, we will do some sort of wood treatment to the mud room and then we'll do something going up the hallway. And then upstairs will probably be more modern finishes in the kids' bedrooms. Um, our, ba our bedroom will all be shiplap, and the bathrooms will be some sort of shiplap or beadboard situation. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to painting here. Where this is just the milk paint. We mixed it up with the immersion blenders. That probably could have mixed it up a little bit longer. It's got a few chunks. Sorry. It was, right. a, it was like a really big cup. <laughs> Do you have scissors? I don't. I, I have haven't used this brush, and there's like these weird rogue hairs, and I cannot. Oh, you tried to put it you in like a. Give me a razor blade. What probably happened is you probably tried to put it in a sample jar yeah, or something. Yeah, but these always get in the way. So can you get me like a razor blade so I can cut off these cat whiskers? Yep. Don't try to shove your brushes where they don't fit, because then you get these weird things. Oh, it's for a kid's car bed, not slats. It lays horizontal. Oh, you need to just like the whole sheet. Just get a sheet of like thin plywood is fine. We can talk later, Caitlin. You'll send me pictures, then I'll know what you're talking about. They sell it also, Caitlin, because I know you have just a small car. You can buy it in four foot sections and get two four foot sections or have them cut the big board in half and you can have them cut it in manageable pieces that you can fit in your vehicle. 
There we go. We're getting rid of the whiskers. Uh, Mary you don't says, want to pull these out of your brush because then it will make the rest of the bristles not tight. You just, if you get like stray hairs every now and then, just take a oh little Oh my scissors. goodness. That, can you please get the immersion blender out? Look at that chunk. Um, yeah, that's weird. I immersion blended it a long time. Well, I don't, I don't think the immersion blender it's was your It's just best. texture. That's a little more texture than one might hope for. Just throw that out there. I just don't want to fight it the whole time. All right, I'll, I'll blend all it right, out. All right, sorry guys, we got to get the immersion blender out. I, that's also not recommended to trim your brushes like that, but if you have to trim them, do not pull bristles out. It's better to cut them short if they get wild because you don't take care of your brushes, because if you pull them out, then all your bristles could come out, because they're made to all be stuck in there together, so don't pull bristles out. The Jamie B board that just showed does the wire and the pounds and regular. Weatherproofed? Like inside my house? Um, no. If you were using it outside, but I would use an outdoor product. Yeah, I would use an outdoor paneling. I would not put this on the outside of my house. This is made for interior use, for decorative use. These aren't actual like exterior walls we're putting it on. And actually, if you show them that, that sheeting up there it will be insulated on the back side because that's exposed to an exterior. Um, so this particular wall here, real quick, so he's talk to you about what she's talking about. So I've got an access hole into that. That's the front porch eave, basically, and the soffit on it. And I need access to that because I've got electrical and things like that. And I will insulate the back side of that. And then up above the ceiling is getting insulated on the top of the roof. I know it's confusing, but that's what's happening. And when I do it, everybody's going to be like, oh, light bulb, and it'll make sense. Well, hopefully everybody watches this because <laughs> keep telling people we're insulating on the outside of the roof. But I know that not everybody watches all the videos, so sometimes they miss that. Especially we've got a ton of new subscribers, so they might not know that the insulation is going outside. And the exterior walls of this house are like double thick adobe brick which is more insulation than you could ever put in a modern wall. So they don't, the exterior walls do not need insulations, and we spray foam insulated all the eaves. So this house is well insulated, even without the ceiling being insulated, this house stays remarkably cool with no air conditioning. Is that better since I, I think what happened is it sat for a minute and I put so much extra bond in it because it's such a big, big no, amount there were like legit powder chunks you have oh okay Much it, is it better now yeah so you don't have to use an immersion blender with your milk paint but it oh, we still have some more it's because the cup you're currently using is probably too small no for that i'm sorry i'm too. just gonna i'm just gonna push the wild <laughs> is there another brush i'll help you paint uh yeah there is well there's a brush that i primed with if you want to rinse it yeah i'll rinse that out so could you move this mirror Yep, I'll lean it up over here. Alright. Yeah, if you make it a little bit thicker, it doesn't drip as much. But it does make it a little bit hard to move. There's still chunks. I should have just mixed it myself. Oh, you know what? I didn't use warm water. That also helps. If you're going to use milk paint, use warm water. That will help it dissolve better. And use an immersion blender. I'm going to use an orbital sander on this, so it doesn't really matter. They'll all come out. But if you're really particular, use an immersion blender, use warm water. Yukumo says she's never missed a farmhouse video. Yukumo, Yukumo is the bomb. There's like, I think there's like 52 in the playlist now. From start to finish, you can watch them all. There's a lot. If I you know, go to the farmhouse remodel. Now playlist. that we're getting to the good stuff, people are going back and watching like the roots. On HGTV, they're like, oh, you can do a whole entire house and three months and we're going to show you in 30 minutes in real life we're almost a year into this and we might get finished somewhere just past the one year mark maybe we're trying real hard but everything takes we're busy so it's just faster to do a lot of the work ourselves and a lot less expensive obviously 
the joy of being a YouTuber. We just uh, film our videos. It does take a little bit longer than the average Joe because we have to edit the content. Anybody that makes videos can tell you that editing can take quite a bit of time. All right. We'll take two coats to get this covered completely. And when I sand it, it'll get really, really smooth. And hopefully this is going to chip off a little bit. Or I'll put the cup here so I can share it with you. I feel like that when you make the, the next batch, it needs to be a little bit thinner. The thing with milk paint is... I did, like I not, said, I mixed it up a little bit and it's coming back to bite me. Yeah. Like sometimes if there's a happy medium, you should, you should follow the recipe for best use. <laughs> um, the next coat, you don't want to put bond in. And you can just make it just a little bit thinner. Okay, I'll see if there's any questions. I'm trying not to get paint on my new shoes. Amy says, this is so much more real and entertaining and educational than HDTV. Some of your beautiful decals on the vanity doors. Um, no, I mean, I like them, but I also, uh, I don't mind them on furniture, but something that's like a permanent fixture, I change my mind a lot. So I like to keep things really simple and then add them. I would add them on the decor that I put in the bathroom before I put them on my vanity. Well, and on the front of the vanity, um, like the kids are gonna be bumping up against that. We're gonna be bumping up against it all the time. I mean, it's, it would be it's, gonna, to that. it's gonna get. That's not really a reason why not to, because it would not come off just because you bumped up against it. Well, I don't know. When Jack starts climbing on the drawers in the kitchen and breaking them out, you tell me how what those are holding up. <laughs> yeah, but it's not gonna take an IOD uh, transfer off. Oh, a transfer. I thought you said decal, like a mold. Oh, like mold. No, I think they meant transfers. I was oh. like, what are you talking about? Transfer's not going to come off. I was super confused. Maybe she meant mold. I think the mold would hold up okay, too. But no, we're, ju we're just going to keep it simple. I know that it's super boring, but I promise you <laughs> that all this white furniture, when it's pulled together and I start layering in decorations, will look really good. Everybody always gives me a hard time about all the white. And then when it's all done, they're like, oh, I love it. <laughs> Well, we've added quite a few uh, texture details, like the shiplap has got some imperfections, the beadboard that we chose is going to have some imperfections, and it's going vertical versus horizontal, so it adds some more interest there. The ceiling is vaulted and looks like an old barn. We've got huge lights up in there. Well, and I will come back at some point and layer in like color and texture and things. I have to start with like a really white canvas. That's just how I decorate. And then I come back and I add color and texture and decor and design. I'm not like a professional designer. I can't tell you ahead of time all the steps that I'll take. I have to do it little by little and I layer it over time. And usually like six months later. <laughs> she has to tell me too. Mostly she's really indecisive about, um, oh, they can't even see. You're like down there talking and not even on camera. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, she, mostly she's indecisive about lighting and uh, where she wants outlets to be. Mostly I won't ever see outlets. <laughs> Not reasonable, but there are some placement things you can do with placement to make them less invisible. Put them on walls that you won't see. But also per code, you have to have them on the wall every six feet, so it makes it tricky to hide. Yeah, so on my vanities, on my bathroom vanity that we have here, um, the three-quarter bath, I just use Big Top. It's held up just fine. Um, and I will probably use Sweet Pick and Top Coat on all of the finishes here or Big Top. Um, and I do like four coats. I let it sit for 30 days to cure up. And you're good to go after that. If you have any damage, then you can just repaint it. It does, it's not going to get the wood all warped or anything like that. I don't ever have problems I mean, unless you let the damage go for a long time and you had like a big scratch and it was getting down to the wood, but... Yeah, and the reason why I like to do painted surfaces like that is because kids will trash your expensive wood surfaces and you cannot just repaint like expensive marble. <laughs> not an option, but you can retouch up your painted surfaces. Or like butcher block countertops in the kitchen. You can sand those down every few years and give them a nice new look. Especially if they're nice and thick. I guess if you don't have kids or people that make Kool-Aid or crafting messes or nail polish. Talk about Eliza. She mixed up some lemonade over here the other day and yeah. already got it Yeah, I already had lemonade on my brand new butcher block countertops. It wiped up just fine. 
I do want to clean it really good and put one more coat of that white oil wax and then buff it, but yeah, it's fine. Eliza gets nail polish all over my bathroom counters and some of it comes off, some of it doesn't. So that's why I like to be able to sand it and paint it. You tell them like, paint on a towel, don't paint on your hand on the countertop. They don't listen. They think that they're neat until they're not. They're talking amongst themselves. Everybody, it looks like a few of, uh, like Jane, she's got some answers. Uh, the painted Huckleberry is giving out some answers. So we're getting. <laughs> they don't even need us. They just want. They're just gonna hang out together and, uh, and watch us paint this. And watch us paint. So this will get sold in the shop. We paid fifty dollars for it, and this will sell for about four hundred. I get asked a lot, like, how come you decide certain prices? This dresser, if I paid a hundred dollars for it, it would still sell for three hundred and ninety-five dollars in the shop. Sometimes you make more money. I always tell people, you make money when you buy it, not when you sell it. So if you buy it for the right price, your profit margin is increased. I don't sell it for less because I buy it for less. Because then when you have to pay more to pick up a piece, it devaluates the value of the piece. And somebody will come in and be like, well, last time it was this price. So. And you don't always get that sweet yeah. deal. Sometimes you do pay more, so you got to play the average. I would normally pay about $100 for a dresser like this. We just got to deal with the mirror because it was broken. So I'm painting this with the mirror in. We'll take a razor blade or like a hard plastic edge and scrape the paint off before it gets too cured. Usually we do that after we seal it. Um, and that way we can get all the sealer and everything else off too. And the same with Jamie putting the, door, the painting with the drawers in. We just find that you can cut it out easier and then you don't miss any spots on the side and you don't have to deal with like painting the whole side. Um, some people are really good at that. We find that it makes the drawers stick over time, so we don't. Well, we just sand all the drawers. So when we're done, we'll pull out all the drawers. Sometimes it can be difficult because they'll get stuck in there good. We use the screwdriver to get them out. And then we sand all the edges so they're nice and smooth. And this dresser has no overlap, meaning if I paint the drawers like this, there's not going to be a weird ledge. So you won't be able to tell when I'm done that I painted the drawers in. Well, and with the mirror here, by doing the razor blade, I find that even if I tape it off, I still have little corners that I'm going to have to clean up and razor blade and do that with anyway. And I also run the very high risk of breaking this antique mirror when I'm putting it back in. Can you do something with that? Yeah. Sheila wants to know if, will it really take months to receive DIY paint if I order today? If you're ordering from us, typically your paint is going to ship in a couple of weeks, even though DIY paint is taking a month to get paint to us. However, some, there are some things that we run out of after, like they take so long to get us paint. So it really depends on what you order. So I guess that's a long and short. Most people are getting their products in a normal amount of time and a handful of people are waiting like two and three weeks to get their stuff because DIY paint is actually taking a month to get paint to us. So we have a huge stock of paint, but if you happen to randomly order something that we run out of and we're waiting on a restock, then we're kind of at the mercy of them. And that's just due to COVID. So if you want DIY paint, you need to order it now. And if you have a rush, just email customer care at jamierayvintage.com and say, hey, these are the products that I need. And we can let you know if we have them in stock and if we can ship faster, we absolutely will. And sometimes we can like recommend like substitutes and be like, oh, what's your project? What are you doing? And unless you need a very specific color, there's a substitute color or a couple colors that you can mix and get yourself real close. Yeah. And it's absolutely not faster to order directly from them because they are shipping the... So we keep huge amounts of stock of DIY paint. So we're just restocking our... We have about a three-week supply of paint, right? And then when they take a month, there's just a few things that they backlog while we wait. They're shipping out paint to us in four-plus weeks. And if you order paint from them or through an affiliate link or whatever, or what it's going to take that full amount of time because they're not shipping those orders faster than they're shipping their retail orders, if it makes sense. So they ship you, everything in order pretty much. Yeah. If you need to get paint order today, and email customer care at jamierayvintage.com with what you're ordering, and if we can get it out sooner, we will. Because we do keep a lot of paint in stock. Well, and I think it's only the DIY that's affected. Like we have like Sweet Pickens top coat is in stock, um, the waxes from Sweet Pickens. Oh yeah, every other thing that we sell does not take that long. It's only certain DIY products that we, if we run out of it and we're waiting on restock. So, but it will hold your entire order up if you order a DIY product that's out of stock. Yeah.
but we work with you guys. Like, you know, COVID is happening, so we're all dealing with this at the same time. And one of the things we do is we have excellent customer service. So if you need something faster and we can get it to you faster, we will. If you make a huge order and we need to break it up into this stuff is waiting and this stuff is, you know, shipping out separately, we'll do that too. Um, and then we have a question about oil wax. You don't need to use clear oil wax before dark or black. However, if it is a light color, do not let it sit on there very long or it will get very, very dark. But it is much softer than like a traditional dark or black wax that you would use. So I say try a test portion, see how you like it before you commit to a whole piece and work in sections. The longer you set that, let that dark or black oil wax sit, the darker it's going to be. And if really concerned, you could just throw down a coat of clear oil wax and then use the dark oil wax. It really depends on the look you're going for. Okay, if you want to scooch, I'm going to put this harp on the floor and we can paint it with... The or, at least, or at least let's do the sealer. Okay. Um, although I used your sealer brush. Let me go wash this out again real quick while you continue filling questions. So I don't know what this question is. It says, Lenora, I must have missed you painting the vanity. Did you paint it and distress it or use dark wax? Which vanity? The vanity it is in the, the back back of no dark wax. It's just distressed. So this one back here. The one in the way back. The third piece back. The vanity here. <laughs> They're stacking um, up right here. <laughs> it's just bead board and then I distressed it and sealed it. This is just painted and not even distressed yet. And this is milk paint. So I am doing a what I call a clean distress, meaning none of these are going to have dark wax on them. Um, they're just going to be distressed and let that original wood tone come through in the distressing. Ampersand Unique says, I got my Jane Marie Vintage Home items very quickly and packing is amazing. Yes, Jane Marie Vintage Home, anything you order from there is shipping um, in 10 business days or less. So that stuff ships very quickly. Occasionally something's on back order and we just email you and say, hey, this is what's going on. Communication is key. All right. Well, and Caitlin's really good at getting back to you and explaining exactly what's happening. Be like, oh, we missed your order, which rarely, rarely happens. Or, we missed your order. We hey, your stuff order. is on back order or whatever. So we're not allowed to talk about orders. We don't miss we don't orders. Miss orders. <laughs> um, I'm just saying Jeff, as an example. Jeff. Like, Caitlin will let you know what's happening with your stuff. Okay. That, all right. I'm like, don't you need to throw all my shippers under the bus? Janice no, says you pop up so easily from the floor. It feels like it takes me 100 years. At the end of the day... It's real slow. It's... Morning time, I'm popping up fast. Uh, Heather says, I'm in love with your house. And this old house is really starting to come alive now. It's showing some of its character. All the crooked walls are really adding some charm. <laughs> so I'm taking the steps to an APO. I want to seal that I'm not sure Big Top will hold up. Jan, Big Top will do just fine. Just wait a week before you use it and be careful for about the first month while that paint and sealer dries hard. All paint generally takes about 30 days to cure completely. Usually if you wait about a week before you use it, you're good. But it's Big good. Top is gonna hold up fine. We have the step tools paint to live in and it's been good. All right, so it's probably been about half an hour. How long have we been live? Since I glued this up, 40 minutes, something like that. And this is already holding together enough with the glue that I can just put the salvation solution right on. All right, I'm going to look and see if I can find a heat gun because... It would be in the black toolbox in the very bottom. Look for cords because that one has a cord. I'm going in. All right, good luck. <laughs> I think I did have it here at one point. But I can't remember now because I was trying to use it to peel up some of the flooring and it didn't really help. Oh, look at that! It's been there? Yes! Uh, you're going to need the extension cord too. Hell, the hungry hero! Having How multiple you sets of tools is paying off. <laughs> Waste Not Wednesday is saved by the heat gun. Alright, how do we grab an extension cord? Well, you really just, I think, just get it dry at this point, and we'll show them what it's going to look like all together. This yeah. didn't have screws um, for the, the heart, for the mirror, so we'll have to find some. 
I've discovered that Lowe's has an entire screw section that's just for furniture repair and little furniture pieces like uh, nuts and bolts and specialty items, like the insert for the mirror you can find at Lowe's. Um, I'm pretty sure Ace has that stuff too. I don't have an Ace Yeah, close check with your me. local um, hardware stores too. Like but, your independent ones will have usually a good selection of screws or they'll order it in. Well, like I was about to say, I'm going to throw Home Depot under the bus. I've not found furniture hardware really at Home <laughs> Depot. But both have it. Now, using a heat gun may cause it to chip or crack more than it ordinarily would. And I just dinged it right there. And now I'm all dusty from that extension cord. This is like the cheap one from Harbor Freight. It is. The heat gun that we have at the shop is much better. It's, it's, all right. it's a lot. It's got a lot more aggressive blower on it. It'll really uh, put the air out. Of the shop. I'm just hoping that this doesn't make it chip too much because heat guns do change. Just move it fast. Right. Now yeah, if you just throw uh, forewarning, if you uh, heat gun your milk tank, prepare for it to do things it wouldn't normally do. <laughs> Disclaimer! Just let it air dry. Although sometimes when my milk paint doesn't chip the way I want to, I wet this dress in, heat gun it, and force my will upon it. If you use a heat gun with DIY paint, you can just crack it too. It's just like a big can crack. You gun that back lip and I'll screw this on so we can paint it while oh, yeah. it's screwed it's, on. The back lip is actually already fairly dry. Okay, let me go find a couple of screws. And this is just one coat that I will come back in a second coat it so it's not splotchy. The first coat always looks not so hot with no paint. Second coat, that looks Okay, is all natural and food safe. If you wanted to seal it with something food safe because you were working on a project that you're going to have to come in contact with food, we sell a hemp oil um, at jamiemarievintage.com that's also food safe, so that's nice. And if you want to make a food safe stain, all you have to do is take the milk paint and water it down like the brown or the gray, and you can make yourself a food safe stain. We do it all the time. And it's really inexpensive to do milk paint like that because you're watering it down like six parts water to one part milk paint. And so a sample of milk paint will go a really long way when you're making a faux stain. All right, I think so. I got a so Debbie asked a question. Why don't you put plastic under the piece you're painting? Um, are you putting in new floors or using what you have? So these are the original fur floors in the house but they've had carpet put over them. They've been painted a few times where there wasn't carpet. You can see over here, we've got wood and then we've got paint. So we're just, we're just not bothering to put a drop cloth down. I'm gonna get an industrial sander and we will zip the top surface of this all the way off and then we'll repaint these white. Yeah, and we're gonna be painting them with fine new farmhouse finishes and then we'll use a water-based floor sealer over the top of the farmhouse finishes. And if they get a little chippy over time, I'm fine with that because I want them to wear naturally. Michelle Jean says, if you're waiting on a shipment, just stock up and combine things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Make sure that you guys are getting, if you do need DIY products, you, you need to plan on ordering them in advance. So do not wait. And again, like I said, every other product you sell that's not a DIY paint product does not take a long time to ship. And most DIY paint order do not take uh, inventory with DIY paint that Debbie Beard has ever seen. We keep a ton in stock. And they are getting quicker. So like last week we only got three boxes, but this week we're getting like eight or nine boxes of paint. So that's exciting. Deborah, are you gonna get that heart? What? 
Is the drill on the island? Oh, you know what? I was keeping it. I swapped the garage door out so I can lock it right. The handle. I'll be right back. Uh, there was a drill last night. gun that harp and I'll start painting it. So this large crackle is because of the heat gun. Yeah. You will get little crackle. When you start getting little crackle, this is what mill paint does on its own. But the large crackle is because we heat gunned it and it's pulling apart as it dries because it's drying too quickly. Which is fine. Which you know it's gonna be awesome and once we're all done and get this thing sealed up and sanded, because right, we'll then sand it and distress I'm gonna go it. Ahead and that top real quick so we can sand it and show them what that looks like. Did you get it dry enough? It doesn't look dry. Oh, it doesn't look dry, but that's just because it has um, bond in it. It's oh, shiny. it's a little shiny. It's so shiny. I really. I did make it thick. You made it nice and thick. I was like, you know what? We're going to be live. I just want to do one coat. <laughs> All right, where is my paintbrush? Um, you set it over on your phone over there. You got paint all on your phone. Yeah, there it's is. It's behind you on the island. Oh, yeah, there is paint on my... Where? Oh, right there. All right, I'm mixing this up because I added water to it. Oh, well, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Uh, now it's better. Well, it's definitely thick now. Yeah, it's thickening up as it sits. Well, no. Oh, I, did you I, add water to I it? I added water to it <laughs> because it was too thick. Yummy. I think I have paint on my face now. I think this uh, is all natural. I don't see it. No, right above my lip. Oh, yeah, you got a little spot on your lip. I can feel it. Oh, wow, this is really thin. Oh, yeah, I forgot that you had to paint that still. Well, oops. So we'll be putting three coats on this one. Well, we can just add more paint to it. When in doubt, add more paint. Yeah, that's the nice thing about milk paint. If you thin it out too much, just add more milk paint. It's kind of like when you're making pancakes and you're like, okay, let me just add a little bit of milk to thin out the batter. And you're like, oh, batter's too thin. Let me add a little bit more flour. And then you add a little more flour. And then <laughs> you add a little bit more milk and eventually you have bricks. Luckily, milk paint is a little bit more forgiving than pancake batter. This is... Special. This is a mess over here now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we're sanding these floors. I'm trying not to splatter it all over me. 
doing good. It's the perfect. I only way. see splatter on your face. Only Not on my the lips. clothes yet. I have a lot of dust on my clothes, and I got paint all over my hands. All right. Second coat's really doing this, even though it's thin. It's getting pretty darn good coverage. All right, I'm gonna stop there because I've got to waste that out so much. I don't want to fight it. I'll just add more milk paint and then blend it. I got to go wash my hands. Talk to the people for a second, please. So even though this is thin, it'll still stick pretty well and get the crackle and things that you want. You could almost use it. So we use milk paint to mix up because it's food safe. We use it like a stain um, on like tables, cutting boards, things like that. So sometimes we do this on purpose for like a wash effect and it works really well. It's funny because I was just talking to him about that. Oh, you talked to him about that while I was washing something? I don't know what you were doing. I thought you were in the room. I missed it if you talked to him about it. It's okay. Well, you know, now they just we hang them. out together so much, we often tell the very same stories, and then we tell them again to the same people over and over. We're basically an old married couple. We, we only have a few stories. Well, and all the same things happen to us because we're in the same room together. <laughs> sure, yeah. We have a few different ones now that you're working on the house and I'm spending more time at the shop. This heat gun is doing special things to this. It's all right. So what do we got here? Watching you two work together is like watching a ballet. I see a pot tea everywhere when Zeb said that was awkward, yet never missed a beat. I need a towel and more tea. Well, I was like trying to get the heart to swap these spots. I'm like, you know, I need hey, to. Hey, Swan Lake, I need to go over there. Swan Lake. <laughs> I'll do this. That was my favorite piece to play on the piano, all right? Aww. Those two years you took those piano lessons. It was three, and I still can't read music. Prove <laughs> that if you don't want to do something and you don't pay attention, you can actually not learn things. I took piano lessons. I could play chopsticks. My mom's like, what day are you going to be sad you don't know how to play the piano? That day has never happened. It may still happen. She may still be right, but it's, I'm not bad. I can do a lot of other things. I don't need to know how to play the piano, too. I'm going to dry this thing up to where I can take the sander to it and sand it a little. It's not really Joanne shipping. Whitehead, I'm late to the game. Two coats of milk paint with extra bun. You got it. Yeah, we should have And heat gunned it, too. <laughs> It takes a minute for the little chippy crackles to come through. Well, we'll definitely take a picture of it when it's all finished. Caitlin, I took piano and I missed playing. It was my stress reliever. Everyone is different with that, though. Yeah. Well, I Caitlin actually played it and liked it. Yeah, I, you know, I enjoyed playing it once I learned a piece. But I memorized the notes. I didn't actually read them, so that's that's all gone now. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna hold this up. Let's let's give you guys a wide view. Can you scooch to the side and he goes? No, I'm not. Stop it. <laughs> When this is all done, I'm going to seal it with clear wax. I don't dare use a like liquid pop coat because even though we find it, I don't want to test it. Oh, it's so pretty! I feel like we were like, oh, this is broken and it looks kind of bad and then we painted it. We're like, let's make it more of a hot mess. Well, that harp is nice and tight now. It's holding this really well. Oh, good. Without screws. You are a... Just don't bump it. I'm going to let it sit there for a sec. Ooh, there you go. Alright. Don't show them up close yet. Let's see what happens. Alright, so 
you can show them the vanity in the back. If they're not in channel membership, they probably haven't seen the, the way you fixed it. So while she's getting that, I'll show you this vanity. It's pretty much all the way done. I've got one more um, thing of silicone to run through here and clean that up a little bit. But it's been siliconed, the mirror's on and attached, and then these drawers, let me see if I can scooch this far enough to get the drawers out. Um, hang on. So yesterday on channel membership, we fixed these drawers and made runners for them. And now I'm gonna need a screwdriver to get that out. Wait for it. You guys get the, yeah, and then business coaching too. Okay, so, hold on. Nope, not enough room to pull that drawer out. Anyway, it's got a runner on it now and it slides pretty nice in there. Oops, crazy camera angle. Sorry, guys. Trying to do things one-handed. So this has a functioning drawer and room for the plumbing. And I just put a little bead of caulking in there. And that'll keep that nice and sealed up. Keep, like, little jewelry from falling through. I had a little crack up here in the drawer. And so I just put some caulk in there. We may paint that to make it match, and we may not. It hides in the drawer, and it's going to have stuff sitting on it. So it won't really be that scene. Enough, but it needs to air dry. I don't want it. I don't think we can sand that yet. No, because it's got the primer under you, can't really sand it. So I can sand it. Oops, I touched it. Damn, yes, I touched it. I told you to. I think you were trying to say something else, and you mixed two that. words. Yeah, there you go. All right, so here we have it. Repaired harp, and what was going to be just a regular kind of plain dresser now has a fun mirror on the back. Chippy like the buffet that I showed you earlier that we did here. And what happens with milk paint is as it dries, it starts to chip. So right now you're not doing a lot of chipping, but it will chip as it dries. And here we go. Well, it's chipping a little bit. You want to show them? It's not quite dry yet, but you can see it's starting to chip off there as it dries. And anywhere there's chunks, it'll chip off. It's gonna, but when it's all finished, all this raised area and detail will shine through the original finish. And that's why we do the clear primer because I didn't want that white primer, which is really hard to distress through to show. I want to see that mahogany that's underneath. So we'll let this dry. We'll finish painting it. We'll put send pictures. And this is gonna be up at the shop. So if you're local to Utah and you're interested in this, it's $395 and we can ship. So it costs about five hundred dollars to ship a dresser this size. Make sure you guys are hitting up. That's five hundred in addition too. Yes, yeah, so five hundred dollars <laughs> plus the three ninety-five. I don't make the rules. That's just how much they charge. Um, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com if you want to achieve a similar look to what we're going to get here. You would need the clear salvation solution, sweet pickens flower sack, extra bond, and then seal it up with clear wax. Is how we're going to finish this. If you like my clothes or you want to look at home decor, that's jamierayvintagehome.com. If you haven't done so, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And tomorrow we will be live about 4 o'clock for the Stay at Home Shopping Network, so don't miss that. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Oh, show, and look, I can, I can do it in the mirror for more DIY. <laughs> Hi, guys. Love you. Thanks for joining us for Waste Not Wednesday.